news just out this morning on WeWork. The company has added Harvard Business School professor Francis Free to its board of directors. CNBC had reported in mid-August that the company had an all-male board at a time when every single S&P 500 company had at least one female director. Uh, she also served briefly as a senior vice president at Uber. Reports say WeWork is planning to kick off its initial public offering roadshow as soon as next week. Other reports also saying that the CEO is giving back the $5.9 million fee that he got from the company for giving them the Wii trademark that he had trademarked himself. Does that include the $700 million in the stock he sold? No, it did oh. not. Yeah. Our guest host this morning is Sam Zell. We're going to talk to him about what he thinks with this. You've read through the S1. There are all kinds of things that just pop out as red flags in this. What, what do you think about it, Sam? Well, I mean, you know, first of all, um, I, I want to distinguish my comments between this particular situation and the overall, what I'll call, sharing mentality in our world today. Uh, I'm, un, I, I, I'm not in a position to say that sharing is going to be wonderful. Uh, maybe we'll share cars, maybe we'll share a lot of stuff. But I think that's a, a new movement in our society. Corporate governance is an old issue in our society. Uh, I'm the chairman of five New York Stock Exchange companies. Mm -hmm. uh, every one of my companies has no uh, separation between my vote and anybody else's vote. Uh, the idea that uh, these companies should have multiple votes or, or multiple controlling class. a company yeah. forever uh, or not being accountable uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. The idea that, you know, I only get, I get 20 to 1 votes, but it goes down to 10 to 1 if I give away a billion dollars, it's just preposterous. WeWork is not uh, alone in, in having a, a situation like that. There are a lot of companies that do that, but there are other things. I don't think any one of the other ones are any better than WeWork in that respect. Right. WeWork is just taking it to an extreme that nobody's ever seen before. You know, you give somebody 20 to 1, and if he dies, you give it to his wife. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I find me another example of that. Uh, find me another example of, uh, of, of creating a company that, uh, you know, loses 50 cents out of every dollar of revenue and, and, and explain to me how that works. So you wouldn't um, be investing in this company? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, I've had the privilege of investing in this kind of company okay. once before. As a matter of fact, this company or this kind of company began in 1956 with a guy named Fijian who rented a floor and then subdivided it. Every single company in this space has gone broke. It, when you say in this we space, just, you mean taking long-term leases and then yeah, offering short-term rentals. Yeah, they just change the name of the company to Savings and Loan. Yeah. I mean, that's really what you're talking about. You know, lending, you know, you know uh, creating long-term liabilities and short-term assets. Uh, every other time in history when they create that, the results are predictable. Why is this any different? Meaning that they are the first ones to go in a recession when things turn down. Well, I mean, I used to be the largest owner of, of container leases, containers in the world. I was the marginal container provider. So every shipping company owned half the containers they needed. Right. And the other half were leased from seven international companies. So those seven companies provided the marginal. When business was good, everybody did terrific. When business was bad, the marginal player lost, and the companies did fine. Do we think there'll never be another recession? Do we think there'll never be another oversupply of office space? Uh, this is marginal stuff, uh, and it's being priced and described as though it was some holy grail. And uh, it, it, it's very hard for me to understand. The fact that the real estate industry as a whole has committed suicide by uh, allowing, give or take, 20 percent of its office space to be, uh, in effect, non-credit makes no sense to me whatsoever either. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think the industry is committing suicide by, by even working with them? To the extent they did. I mean, it's OK if you have a, a corner or you have a WeWork space or a co-working space. We're talking about 20. They're the largest landlord in New York, right. London, et cetera. 
well, what what happens? You know, you've got so one. So what's the chance they've become too big to fail? Well, that's a different story. In other words, the question because, becomes right. They own well, so but, much space that when when yeah, but, when the true it, downturn happens. Yeah, but if you're too big to fail, what happens is you can't make your payments. Right. You can't make your payments. You therefore go back to the landlord and say, "Gee, I'm sorry, I yep. can't make my payments. Change the rent." That doesn't do a lot for the equity holder. It may protect the bondholder. Maybe. Maybe.